Maybe it's just me, but I think the need for monetary reform is so critical that every single candidate for president out there should be talking about it. Now, of course, Ron Paul does talk about it, and I give him great credit. He speaks very knowledgeably and with real commitment. He actually has a proposal for reforming our current monetary system, which is hardly a system, really. It's more just a matter of discretion exercised on an ad hoc basis by a small committee in Washington. But where are the other candidates on this issue? We've heard a few references to hard money or sound money during the televised primary debates. We need to rein in the Fed or fire Bernanke, those kind of comments. That doesn't solve it. Are they talking about a monetary rule or limiting the dual mandate or targeting inflation? And would that be much better than what we have now? What we have now is nuance, which is fine if you can spend all your time listening to CNBC so you can dissect the latest communique from the Federal Open Market Committee or listen to a town hall style session with Bernanke. Not to digress too far, but just to emphasize, there is no monetary system, no mechanism in effect domestically or internationally. There's only the monetary status quo, and that's what needs reforming. But there will be no transition to a new monetary regime, the subject for this panel, until the need for reform is recognized at the highest levels of the U.S. government. How can American voters not consider the failings of monetary policy as a fundamental policy issue? How can they not demand ideas and specific proposals from any prospective president? The world has gone through a credit debacle and financial collapse with devastating consequences for the real economy. The most powerful central bank issuing the most influential currency is located a mile and a half from here it's a U.S. government agency with its chairman, vice chairman, and entire board of governors all appointed by the president and confirmed by the Senate. The next American president, whoever it is, should be laying out a path to serious monetary reform, not only for this country, but for the world. Because we haven't fixed anything since this last money meltdown. What has really changed since where we were just before the collapse, let's say June 2008. At that time, the total notional amount of outstanding over-the-counter financial derivatives was $684 trillion, about 12 times the world's gross domestic product. Well, that figure dropped some in the immediate aftermath of the crisis, but the latest numbers show that the notional value of outstanding financial derivatives has now climbed back over $600 trillion. And what has changed on monetary policy itself? Alan Greenspan has been faulted, mocked, for having kept interest rates too low for too long. Maybe he did. He's not omniscient. Now, right there, that is why we need monetary reform. Because Fed chairmen, even very, very intelligent Fed chairmen, are not omniscient. Here's the point I want to make about monetary policy, and it relates to inflation. Inflation, as measured by the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, was rather low during those final Greenspan years, 2 to 3 percent, slightly over 3 in 2006 when his term ended, but close enough to what the Fed likes to describe as benign. And so here we are today with high unemployment, broad fear of falling back into recession. One would expect reduced consumer demand under these conditions. One would not expect price pressure to be coming to bear in these tough times. I mean, why should there be any inflation at all? And yet, the latest annualized inflation rate shows 3.53%. Something is really wrong with the calibration of the money supply to the needs of the real economy, to the level of productive activity. There's a purely speculative game being played out in the financial sector with credit default swaps, with massive levels of derivatives, 
two-thirds of them linked to gaming the differential interest rate policies of the Federal Reserve against the European Central Bank or just betting on currencies. We see from one day to the next the Dow Jones Industrial Average jump 200 points, fall 200 points, back up 200 points. Same for the FTSE or the Nikkei. Responding to this global kabuki theater of frantic meetings among finance ministers and the latest pronouncements from central bankers. The real economy doesn't bounce around like that. It's more like a slow moving barge with seven billion people aboard. But it's being whipsawed by these monetary policy driven events, which almost seem to belong to a different stratum. You think, those guys should be playing with tokens, with casino chips that can only be used to chase paper profits in financial markets. The rest of us just need money that works. We need money that, one, provides a useful medium of exchange. For me, that means on a global basis. I happen to believe in free trade. Two, we need money that functions as a meaningful unit of account. That means across borders and through time. And three, speaking of time, we need money that serves as a store of value, not money that loses 3.53% of its purchasing power in a slow year. Really, should prices be going up over 3.5% in 2011 when 9 out of 10 Americans believe we're still in a recession? This disconnect between monetary policy and the real economy goes to the core of my presentation for this conference. I contend that reliable money is absolutely the key to having a free market economy operate at optimal levels. It's such a critical tool for measuring value, whether you're consumer or producer, investor or entrepreneur, creditor or debtor. Money has to be dependable and accurate because money gives voice to the market by conveying the price signals that allow people to make rational decisions.